Good day, you're watching Malaika, the talk show for African Christian women. We are back with interesting topics, interesting guests, and today being one such topic. Stay where you are. We'll be back in an instant. Brotherly correction. Being corrected is not easy. Correcting is not easy. We have so many questions we could ask for this, but we have a few that we'll tackle today with... Mama Audrey from yes, Audrey from Mauritius. So happy to be with you. And with Mama Audrey, we have Pastor Mickey Hardy. Thank you, Ms. Pastor Mickey, for coming. It's our pleasure to be with you. And welcome to Auntie Zods from Bloweo, Zimbabwe. Welcome, Auntie Zods. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. It's great to be here and it's worth it to come all this way for Malaika. Yes, indeed. Thank Amen. You for Amen. <laughs> Amen. From the Cape Verde, we have Tatiana. Thank you, Jackie. I'm looking forward to this season. We have some exciting topics ahead. Exactly. To get us started, Tatiana, we're going to move over to Tatiana's overview. Tatiana, what do you have um, for us in terms of brotherly correction? Well, viewers, this is an interesting one. Brotherly correction is never something easy to discuss or to receive. But to get us started, we want to look at the dilemma in brotherly correction. Well, we live in a culture that promotes tolerance in accepting others as they are. So Christians often run into friction when they need to rebuke another Christian. But there are two sides of this story here. On one side, you have Christians who simply do not like to be corrected. But on the other side, and I think and I hope on the overwhelming majority, there are Christians who are open to correction. However, the way the correction is done is often wrong. Additionally, when a correction is done wrong, it may hurt our pride, even when it's done well, actually, and it may make, make us feel unloved or inferior. Numerous Christian articles that I reviewed have emphasized the importance of our attitude when giving correction and when rebuking others. Common pitfalls include a sense of superiority, a know-it-all attitude, and the temptation to retaliate for our past hurts. Well, this program is looking, at, is looking at the African context. So what are some of the trends on the ground in brotherly correction? The first is in corrections that are carried out publicly. Obviously, this will lead to a stigma and obviously humiliating the individuals who are involved. In many churches, a pastors, the, uh, pastors are utilizing preaching to specifically target and rebuke certain individuals, making their situation obviously public and, and widely known to the congregation, which is also embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. And the last is, and the most I'm shocking, I think, is using, using these rebukes and corrections and delivering them through prophecies. <laughs> so publicly condemning and shaming these individuals in the church and using it in the name of the Lord. Well, the Gravity Leader study in 2020 sheds light on an unfortunate reality. The behavior of believers stands out as the second leading reason that Christians are leaving churches of today. Many individuals are departing from churches due to experiencing shame, judgment, and neglect at the hand of fellow Christians and Christian leaders. In contemplating this weighty matter, let us remember, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. And over to you, Jackie. I take it. Thank you very much. And I give the context straight over to Auntie Zods. Tell us, Auntie Zods, on the ground, is this happening? How much is happening? What do you see there? Uh, yes, Jackie, it is happening, as Tatiana is saying. And uh, as usual, for us in Africa, we always take something a lot further <laughs> than <laughs> we pick up something, we go wild with it, you know. But I think the thing I really want uh, to touch the most is the fact that it's, it's the purpose of rebuke. I think that's where we, we fall short and the way we, we rebuke. So, for example, I, I will say that most of the times people are made to stand in front of the church if they have sinned mm. or they've fallen and confess. But the heart of it is not restoration. The heart often is humiliation no. and to make the person feel bad so that they don't do it again. So it doesn't bring that person to a place of restoration instead we find there's more people out of the church because of being badly corrected and it affects them and then obviously they they fall away then the other uh, way that 
generally rebuke happens in some churches is that if someone sins, they're actually made to sit at the back of the church. Oh, they Lord. call it backbenchers, mm. like the naughty corner. And for a while, you'll be sitting there and everyone who walks into the church no. knows, mm, <laughs> you've been up to no good, you know. But it's... I've been introduced to that area once I was in Africa. Oh, okay. Oh, the back so it's, section. It's the back bench. Were you made to sit at the back? <laughs> <laughs> I was shown where the, the people who have seen. <laughs> this is their corner there. Yeah. But really what concerns me the most is uh, there is a lady who we actually tried to reach out to. And because in her previous church, she had, um, she had had a child out of wedlock. And it's obviously a big sin. And she was told that you can never go back to church again because oh, of the sin. So now when we are inviting her to church, she says, no, I can't come. I've been told that I can't come to church because I sinned. Hmm. So there's no grace. There's no I heart mean, of the Lord. where's the reason why Jesus died? Exactly. We, we cannot have forgiveness of sin now where we are. So, I mean, the poor lady is living in condemnation and feels there is no way for her anymore. She's done the ultimate. She can't come to church. Hmm. And that for me, I'm sure the Lord grieves when he looks at the church today. Yeah. So I hope you were able to bring her to church though. Yes, I'm glad she came, but she couldn't believe the grace of God and that she could come and the Lord would accept her like that. Not only the Lord, but I mean the church. Exactly. The people of the church welcomed exactly. her. Exactly. That's yeah. wonderful. Mm. Yeah. I'm heaving. Shame, it's a sad reality of what actually happens, the backbenchers. But uh, Pastor Miki, how should it actually happen when someone has sinned in the church? How do we go about it? Um, correction. Well, um, we have seen a lot of different ways in the churches, in the different churches, how to, let's say, deal with sin, deal with someone that how has fallen. How they deal with it. And uh, it's shocking sometimes to see how pastors deal with these Christians. And in fact, um, what they want to show what they want to bring to the church, it's like it's a sense of a ho such a holy place, mm. such something that cannot be uh, mixed with sin, that they will bring that sinner to punish him. Exactly. To bring punishment to him and to make everyone know that this brother or this sister has committed that sin and that he's got now to, punish, to be punished in a certain of moment of time where, we'll pro as you said, we'll probably sit at the back of the church there and everybody will know. know that mm. this man or this sister either has committed adultery or whatever that may be. So it is shocking to see how sin is being dealt with in the church. But uh, when we look at the word of God and we look how the Lord himself dealt with that woman who committed adultery. Mm. He had uh, another heart. Mm. Contrary to these Pharisees that wanted to uh, stone her to death because that's what the law said. But uh, when she came before the Lord and she felt the heart of someone who wanted to uh, bring to her, to her the sense of being accepted and forgiven. forgiven. Exactly. So that's the, 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 the key of the new covenant lifestyle, where we understand that when we have failed, whatever it is, we can come to the Lord, and when we repent about it, that's done with. We cannot come back to it. We cannot... Oh, because uh, the Lord forgives. He forgets. Exactly. It's done. It's so, us. so the biggest problem of the church today, one of the biggest problems of the church today, is the ignorance about the depth of repentance and the depth of forgiveness. Because forgiveness and, and repentance, well, and we know it works together, but... So many Christians do not forgive themselves because they don't understand the, the depth of the forgiveness of God mm. and how God looks at our repentance when we repent before him. Mm. 
You know, in one John chapter one, it says, you know, when when we fall short, when uh, you confess our when sins, we confess our faith, sins. He's faithful, faithful and, and just, just to forgive us. Mm. So, but <laughs> how come we can bring someone in the forefront and exposing him and humiliating him? You know which the Lord did not do at all, yes. which mm. he accepted that woman for who she is, but he, he spoke to her and he allowed her to feel his heart that he has forgiven her and that now she can go and sin no more. So that's the, I mean, the sadness of, of what happens in churches today. Mm. I don't know if pastors want to show themselves as, as holy, as as representing the Lord like a, 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 you can call that a statute or mm. uh, to show themselves big and to say, okay, I'm there to represent the Lord. I've got authority. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it's I personally, so sad. When I, when I hear what's happening, for instance, in Africa, I personally, first of all, I think there's a lack of total revelation of the heart of the Lord. Because, I mean, when you're born again, the first thing you know is that when you repented, the Lord has forgiven you. So where do they see that in Scripture, what they're doing? Uh, you were mentioning earlier on that there was a church where the pastor was whipping people. Yes, yes. Maybe he saw that Jesus used a whip in the temple and yes. now he's using... <laughs> That's the way to uh, on the, Not on the money yes. changes, but mm. on the Christians. Mm. And obviously, um, I think the other reason of this is the law. It's a law inside of the church, and again, it's pride. Wanting to show that your church is holy mm. and you're not put up with sin, you're not going to be lenient with sin, or you're going to deal with it the way God is wanting you to deal with it. And in the meantime, we know, we've done so many programs, we know that most of the time, these very pastors are themselves living in adultery. Exactly. And they are not sitting at the back of the mm. church. Mm. So it's do what I tell you, but don't do what, what I do. I do. Mm. So it's a mixture of many things. And uh, as Mickey was saying, the Christian doesn't forgive himself. I mean, of course he won't forgive himself. How can the poor guy forgive himself when nobody's forgiving him? Yeah. When he's, he's caused to feel condemnation everywhere around him, everybody is... Saying, you know, as you said earlier on, oh, you are, you've been naughty boy. Why are you sitting there? I mean, border. it's, it's, it's mm. incredible because yeah. once again, I don't know if it's culture, I don't know where they get it from, but I believe that the minimum a pastor can do is to look at what the Bible says. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. But you see, Audrey, the church should be a place of refuge. Amen. A mm. place where you meet the Lord. Mm. A place where you can feel the love of God. Exactly. The acceptance of God mm. for His people that He has redeemed mm. by the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. But there's no wonder why people leave the church. Christians leave the church because for them it's like a place of judgment. Exactly. It's like a place where you come before a judge and a magistrate mm. to expose your life, to show what you have done wrong. And, and you know, Christians don't want that. Mm. That's not what their heart desire. Mm. They have the right to feel the heart of Jesus and the love of God and the mercy of God. They have the right to feel that. Mm. But unfortunately, the church has not become a place of refuge, a place where people come and, and they fear to come there. They, they, they fear to be exposed, they fear, you know, a Christian, there is no problem for him to be exposed. No problem for him to, to show himself, to show it's what he has done, less. his mistakes, it's his fault. Yeah. But there is a way to do it. Mm. You can't just take him and plunge him, you know, uh, and finish with him and destroy his life because you want to show yourself big as a pastor. Yeah. And you don't have no understanding of the revelation of what the church is mm. and what does it represent. Mm. Again, yeah. again, uh, Mickey just mentioned uh, the Christian is scared. Exactly. To go in church. But he's scared of who? Not, Not of Lord. God. Not the yeah. Lord. It's not the fear of God, mm. it's the fear of this man yeah. yes. who calls himself the representative of God 
mm. and the way he's going to deal with them or his wife. Mm. Yes. Uh, which of the two, I don't know. <laughs> yes. So, okay. uh, unfortunately, it's not at all the fear of God. The sad thing is that, like Mickey and I, we left a traditional church. I promise you, if I left a traditional church to come to a place which is supposed to be better, I'm supposed to have gone through an upgrading. Now I'm saved. I'm in a born-again Christian circles. I should feel the heart of the Lord. Mm. I should feel the, the mercy of the Lord. That's, that I'm in, in a new day completely. And I've got to face that. Then you I mean, leave. No. I don't have to, yeah. I'm not going to stay there. That's for sure. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not, I didn't leave my home, my family, my friends, my traditional church to come here to be whipped to be told, to be humiliated. Mm. I mean, I came here to feel the heart of Jesus for me. Exactly. Mm. And what his plan is for me, mm. not for men to, huh? Yeah, but you know, they come here, they come to the church, it's new for them, and this is what they experience. Yeah. And they feel that this is the right way to do. Yes. They don't know anything Because any they better. don't know anything they else. Don't know any better. Better. They don't yeah. know anything else yeah. because yeah. that church does not represent the, the church truth. of the Lord. Exactly. exactly. Does not represent, but mm. they have come there and this is Genuine. what happens. Mm. And you will see that these same people that are being punished and sit at the last row, they will stay there. Yes. It's they will stay there, exposed by every, to everybody, mm. humiliated. Shame. Yeah, because they, some way people that's the way are, they think it is. They are wanting something. Yeah. They love people the Lord. Are actually no, they love the Lord, something. as Tatiana says. Yeah. They love the Lord, that's yeah, why they, they stay. That's why because church. somehow they think that's the Lord doing it to them. Exactly. That's the worst part. Yes, but how, how much can they bear? How much can they accept? And at the end of the day, they run away. They run away. Mm -hmm. And they think that this is the church. Yeah. And they don't want to go to and another church. And they don't want church. to go to other churches, yeah. no. That's oh, it's, I mean, it's, 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 a very, it's a very bad experience for Christians, mm -hmm. which, in fact, they should not have, uh, to, go to, have to go through that. Yeah. <laughs> As I said earlier on, the church is a place where, you know, you come with everything you are to meet the Lord. Uh, come to, to me. meet the Lord who loves us so much. But then you are crushed, you are destroyed completely. I mean, it's a... It's, it's like a shame. you just said... Come to me, all of you who are burdened, uh, because my, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. Yes. Yes. But now they Ooh. come and the burden is so it's heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> the, the contrary. I mean, something has happened. What happened to but, the burden of Jesus that yes. was so light and the yoke that was so light and the yes. burden so easy? Yes. So, yes. Yeah. so what happened to that? You know, there are things that are unrepairable. Mm. We know we pastors, we make mistakes. We fail. We don't do everything right. Mm. You know, it's normal because we are all human. But to come to the, that place, <laughs> that place of, you know, exercising authority mm. in such a... The flesh. <laughs> yeah, a terrible way. Sometimes when you think of it, you it's know, you, you can't yeah. believe it is true. Mm. And you can't believe that this is happening in churches. Yeah. Yeah. You, can't, you can't believe, but it is a reality. It is happening. Yes. But it, yeah, is happening. it is happening. And sometimes Christians cannot bear it anymore. Mm. Shame. Yeah. They can't bear it anymore. Which is normal. They are yeah. crushed. They are, mm. And they will bear a bad testimony outside. Mm. About the church. Yeah. About what the church is. Yeah. Somehow, and it's when you spoke of, of the woman who was caught in adultery, I mean, that was a breakaway from the law to grace. Yes. It was clear. Mm -hmm. But if we look at these situations that Tatiana spoke about, that Auntie Zod spoke about, they are still under the old, old dispensation. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's still law. It's yeah. the spirit because of the old covenant. It's the spirit of the old covenant mm -hmm. because the, they have not found the heart of grace, the heart of Jesus, the heart of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. yes. So it is exactly the same spirit as the Pharisees. In fact, yes. the Pharisees, they were rejoicing to stone that lady. It was yeah. such because yeah. they were doing God's will. Mm. They were doing what God was expecting and they were so proud. Mm. And but that's what the old covenant says. You sin, you're condemned. Yeah. Mm. You sin, you're condemned. Mm. Exactly. So how, 
that, that's, that's a spiritual reality, that's a spiritual reaction that no one can change. If you stay under the old covenant, you can't change it mm. because it is spiritual. Yeah. This is how it works. Mm. But then when you step into the new covenant, mm. in, into the spirit of the new covenant, the spirit of Christ himself, then, then you, 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 you move away from that. From the old. Mm -hmm. And everything that you do in the church, everything that you are supposed to do as a pastor, as a Christian, because we can encourage one another and we can even bring some correction to one another. Yes. Mm. But everything that we do, we have to try and manifest and transmit the heart of Jesus yes. exactly. and not the heart that was being manifested in the old covenant. Exactly. exactly. That's our all aim mm. to serve the Lord. Mm. Yes. That's our aim, yeah. is Pastor, to bring the Lord, the heart. Pastor Mickey, you're talking about correction in the church now, but is excommunication where someone's actually told to leave the church, is that biblical and in what cases would that happen in the church now? Yes, that can happen in specific cases where Christians do not want to repent and they feel that they, they are free to live in sin and when they are reprimanded, and it could be the pastor, it could be anyone that comes to him and say, listen, you're living in sin, you must get out of it, let's pray together, no, he doesn't want, and then it goes, you know, you bring someone else with you, and then he still doesn't want, and then you bring him to the church, and you say, now, my friend, we are sorry, but you cannot come to the church. And the Apostle Paul is very clear in the book of, of Corinthians, in chapter 6, where he talks about a little leaven, will lift up the whole leaven, the whole lamp mm. so you cannot be a witness of uh, uh, a witness of an acceptance of sin in the church because then you will become uh, somebody who gives a bad example so that as if the church accepts everything mm. so it's normal for the leadership of the church to bring that correction that decision and it's always, always, and at all times, that action exactly. has got a, an aim. An aim is to bring that person to realize his state mm. for him to repent. And sometimes we probably, as people, we would not do the, 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 the same way. Maybe we will try to do the same way. But that's why, again, we must look at it in the spirit because when the Lord spoke to his disciples about, you know, correcting uh, uh, brother. that brother, you know, it works so powerfully in the spirit that when this guy, this brother or sister, is out of the church, it's then, it's like a, a foundation for the Holy Spirit to speak to him, bring him to repentance, that's the aim. The aim is not to get him out of the it's church and finish punish, with him, it's, it's to bring him back to the okay. church. Mm -hmm. That's the aim. Okay. So that's why when, when even the Apostle Paul had to deal with that situation in the book of Corinthians, exactly. what was the aim? The aim is For to save his soul. For the saving of a soul. Is exactly. to save his soul. Amen. So that's why sometimes we have difficulty to understand. But uh, again, I say the spiritual world, how the spirit works, it's totally different, and that's why we cannot sometimes accept it. And many Christians are so emotional, and they are so like babies, that they don't understand it. They don't understand it, and they fight it, and they oppose it, but that's the way it goes. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Miki. We've actually come to the end of our episode today. <laughs> Time flies. Yes. Time is <laughs> <it's> galloping <laughs> too fast. And to end, we'll go over to you, Mama Audrey, Okay, please. personally, I feel the most for these people who have been victims. I'm not suffering so much for the pastor, but I want to say to these people, if you've been in that situation where you happen to be weak, you fell and you sinned, and you receive that kind of judgment, of condemnation, of treatment, and that today you are out of the church or in the church, still enduring, I want you to know that it's not the Lord. Don't be mad at God because that is not the heart of the Lord for you. Mm. Mm. The heart of the Lord says he will leave 99 sheep Amen. to go and fetch you mm. wherever you are because you are more important to him than the 99 sheep who are sitting on pews 
in the church. So first of all, I would like to encourage you, forgive that pastor. Mm. He doesn't know what he's doing. Just like Stephen said, the Lord said, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. Forgive him. The main thing is for your heart to be free, to be clear. Number one. Number two, repent for whatever you did wrong. That's the way to freedom. And once the Lord has forgiven you, once you've done that, look for a church. And if you can't find a church, write to us. We will be happy to encourage you to see that you grow in the Lord, that you will receive all the right teachings. Other one, find a family where you can be accepted, where there's grace, where there's love, where there's mercy. But do not throw away the baby with the bathwater. Throw away the water, but keep the baby. Do not leave Jesus. Mm -hmm. Keep Jesus. Walk with Jesus because he has saved you and you are his child and you are so precious to him. Mm -hmm. So that is my encouragement to you. Do not let the words of men destroy you. Know that Jesus says that if you have confessed your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to set you free from whatever it was. Like he said to this woman, he said, go and sin no more. Mm. May the Lord bless you Amen. and encourage you. Amen. Amen. And thank you at that note, Mama Audrey. Thank you so much, Pastor Mickey Hardy, for being with us. Lady, it's a ladies, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Viewers, the gospel is powerful. Scripture is powerful. Repentance is powerful. God loves you. Goodbye. Well,